Hello friends, welcome to lecture 6.5 on the topic of Wigner-Willi distributions. In this lecture, we are going to start our journey on smooth Wigner-Willi distributions. In particular, we will look at two variants of Wigner-Willi. One is called the pseudo Wigner-Willi and other is called the smooth Wigner-Willi. But we are going to look at an elementary, just learn the elementary basics of smoothing. In the next lecture, we are going to take this up in a more generalized fashion where we look at Cohen's class of distributions. <clears throat> the idea here is to show how smoothing can bring about positivity and more importantly talk about the connection between spectrogram and Wigner-Willi. We will revisit this connection between spectrogram and Wigner-Willi more formally in the next lecture. So, to recall we have three prime drawbacks of Wigner-Willi. One is that it has a non-local nature in the sense that it gives equal importance to the past and future of the time location of interest. So, if I am standing at a certain time and uh, that is a point in time and I am looking at the Wigner-Willi of the signal, if you recall the definition of Wigner-Willi, it, it looks at the entire extent of the signal from minus infinity to infinity. That is not a problem, but it gives the same weightage to the local correlation that it computes at uh, all values to the left and right of tau. But that is not really desirable. We would like to get the local properties and therefore, we would like to fix that issue and that is what we are going to do with the pseudo Wigner-Willi. The second and probably a more prominent drawback is the lack of positivity or non-negativity in Wigner-Willi. It may be positive, it may not be. So, therefore, there is no guarantee that this uh, values of Wigner Willi distribution will be non negative in the time free entire time frequency plane. And the third, which is equally disturbing and prominent, is the presence of the interferences whenever the signal has more than one frequency. Well, in this is not applicable to chirps, for chirps, Wigner Willi is the best, but we are talking of multi component signals when I have more than one frequency at a time or two frequencies separated in, in time, not necessarily in a chirp fashion. Then I have interferences. So, how do we fix that as well? Of course, what we are going to discuss is only a part of how to address the positivity and interferences, but essentially the ideas will be laid down and then we will take that up in Cohen's class in a more generalized way. So, let us begin with pseudo Wigner Willi. We said just now that the one of the key problems is the non-local nature and I would like to give more importance to the values of the signal within the vicinity of my analysis point in time and give less importance to far off values, whether it is in the past or future. Well, by <clears throat> with our experience with short time Fourier transform, we know that the remedy is to use a window function and that is what this H does for us. It brings in a windowing nature. Obviously, this the one of the prime requirements is that this H should have compact support in time. What we mean by compact support is a technical word to denote finite duration functions. Right? So, obviously, I want this window to have finite length. Otherwise, what is the point in performing the pseudo Wigner-Willi distribution at all? That is the only difference between the Wigner-Willi and the pseudo Wigner-Willi. On the right hand side, that is the extreme right of this equation 1, I have rewritten the pseudo Wigner Willi in the frequency domain to show you that the windowing in time is essentially resulting in a convolution of the Wigner Willi along the frequency axis. So, what is happening is that the Wigner Willi distribution is computed and then convolved with the window in frequency, and we will shortly learn that this convolution is nothing but smoothing in the context of enforcing positivity and so on. So, at the moment you can think that what pseudo Wigner Willi is doing is essentially it is smoothing the Wigner Willi along one dimension which is a frequency and we will learn later that we need to smooth in both dimensions if we want positivity. So, that is a nice uh, interpretation to begin with. Now, obviously, because I have windowed the Wigner Willi the effect of windowing is such that it will bring down the time frequency localization or the nice localization that Wigner really had for all the signals, right? Just like the way we saw in the case of short time Fourier transforms. But 
because we are smoothing in the frequency axis, there is a possibility that I will reduce the interferences. Right? I may not be able to reduce the interferences completely because the smoothing is only happening along the frequency axis. Right? Okay. So, let us understand the consequence of using pseudo wigner willi on an example. Again, I have taken this example from the time frequency toolbox tutorial. I have generated 128 samples of the signal. By now, you should be familiar with this routine called atoms. And I have, in fact, four atoms, but they are all centered at the uh, same location here. Uh, sorry, two of them are centered at the same location. And I have a pair of frequencies here, right? 0.15. There are pair of atoms with frequency, center frequency 0.15, another pair of atoms with frequency 0.35. That is what you see and they are separated in time. When I evaluate the wigner willi of the signal, I have of course, now I am using the analytic representation that goes without saying. The atoms routine also gives me analytic representation of the signal. So, I have these four terms correctly being identified which belong to the signal, but then these five terms which, is, which are at the center, the geometrical center of these four atoms, they are interferences. Well, one of the main drawbacks also is that it is going, they are going to be non-negative, but the main concern here is the interferences. How does the pseudo wigner willi perform? Well, what it has done is it has gotten rid of these interferences, right? As you can see, it has gotten rid of the three interfering terms, but it still retains these two interferences. It has not managed to completely alleviate as we had argued before. But at what expense did we eliminate these three interfering terms? The expense is the loss of the time frequency resolution. So, we have now a poorer time frequency localization compared to the original, Wig, uh, original Wigner Willi there is a smearing of the energy in both time and frequency dimensions. This is exactly the compromise that we talked about. And you should start expecting this as we work with smooth wigner willi distributions, you will improve the uh, distribution in terms of removing interferences, but you will lose out on the time frequency localization. That is the trade off that we have and the spectrogram and scalogram being one such possibilities. Okay. Now, having discussed the pseudo wigner willi and seen that it actually performs some kind of uh, smoothing in the frequency domain, we are now ready to talk about smoothing in both time and frequency and the purpose here is to enforce positivity. Earlier, the purpose was to remove, uh, to bring about a local nature to wigner willi and side effect was, positive side effect was reduction in interferences, but not complete elimination. And there was no guarantee that the pseudo wigner willi is going to be non-negative value. But now, I want non-negative value distribution. And what I am going to do now is start with the idea of smoothing the wigner willi itself or convolving the wigner willi. Why should smoothing of wigner willi produce any positive numbers? Well, think of this elementary example where I have a sequence of positive and negative numbers. If I perform some kind of averaging in a specific manner, then it is possible to always guarantee a positive outcome that is a positive valued number as the outcome of such a smoothing operation. That is exactly the idea here. Now, since the wigner willi is a two dimensional function, I need to perform smoothing in the two dimensional plane, which means I have to walk along the time and frequency dimensions and this theta is the one that will help me smooth the wigner willi at every point within the vicinity of tau comma z. So, tau comma z is where I am standing and I am going to walk in the neighborhood of tau comma z and this tau prime and z prime will help me march around the tau z. So, let me just draw that on the board for you. So, this is the tau axis or the time axis and this is the z axis which is the frequency and time. Assume that your wigner willi is centered around some point here. Let us call this as tau and z or you can say z naught, although we do not have tau naught and z naught in the integral. But think of, we place 
uh, momentarily tau z in the integral with tau naught and z naught. And by smoothing, what we are going to do is we are going to walk along within, uh, walk around this point within this vicinity, maybe in this region and go and add up numbers in a particular way, right. Now, how far do I go within this vicinity and how I add up is what theta will tell me. Well, the first thing that we, are do, we should note when we are talking about smoothing here is, if I am standing here, I am walking to the right, to the left, to the bottom and to the top in all uh, directions surrounding this point, right. So, I am looking to the left, right and so on and this in estimation theory is also clear when I want to construct a smooth estimate of a signal. So, let us say I have a signal x which has this kind of a profile and let us say this is I do not have the x itself, but I have a noisy version of the signal and standing at some point in time t, I would like to construct a smooth estimate because I have a noisy version of x. I would like to get an estimate of the underlying x signal by this smoothing operation. One of the ways of doing it is I could look to the left, right and the center and take a, an average, a uniform average or a weighted average, whichever way. So, a simple average would be this. Well, ideally I should use the sample data for averaging. So, as you can see to construct the, this will give me the smooth estimate at this point. So, I assume that this is the kth sampling instance. At this point, this would give me a smooth estimate. Of course, there are a number of possibilities here, millions of possibilities, but it is a very simple way of estimating the x. This smoothing essentially will remove these noisy terms that are present in x k and also surrounding points and that is exactly the idea here also. I have some fluctuations here when I go from, uh, go around this point and by smoothing I am killing those fluctuations that are causing negative values to appear and also interferences to appear. It is a very, uh, uh, what do you say, schematic way of illustrating things, but the more formal operation is to evaluate that double integral. That is the first point. The second point is we use the term convolving synonymously with smoothing and the reason comes from the systems theory, linear systems theory perspective. To understand that, consider a standard linear time invariant system or a general linear time invariant system, continuous time one, whose input is u and output is y and we know from linear systems theory that the output of this LTI system is modeled by this convolution equation. What does this convolution do? Let us take a step input here, right. So, if I have a step at the input and let us say this step is actually starting at t naught in time, so this is my input to the system and when it goes through the LTI system, assume that this LTI system has damping characteristics, the output comes out as a distorted step is what we normally see, but in fact what we can also say is that the sharp corner in the step has now been smoothened out or flattened out. So, we can use the term convolution or smoothing or distorting equivalently depending on the context. Of course, the gain here and the the rate at which it will reach a steady state, all that depends on the filtering characteristics or the LTA characteristics, but the main message is convolution and smoothing are identical or synonymous, but always smoothing does not have to be implemented as convolution. Whenever I am performing convolution, it means smoothing, but not necessarily vice versa. I could implement smoothing in a number of other different ways as well. Okay, so, now having understood the need for smoothing or the idea of smoothing itself and uh, having understood the relation between smoothing and convolution. 
we should recall from our experience with pseudo wigner willi that we are going to lose out on the time frequency resolution as a result of this smoothing right and we can bring about positivity by enforcing certain conditions on theta this is what we are going to learn in the next lecture as to how by imposing certain requirements on the kernel not only can i bring about positivity but also certain other desirable features of the distribution that is a modified wigner willi distribution now all the class of distributions that i get through this operation are called smooth wigner willi and remember that i am performing or smoothing in the time frequency plane right and if i decide to perform convolution then this kernel would be rewritten as theta of tau minus t prime comma z minus z prime that is the, that is what will be the consequence of assuming convolution as a way of smoothing okay so the question that we should ask at this point is i can also arrive at positive distributions by starting from a linear transform and taking the squared magnitude like i do in short time fourier transform or otherwise spectrogram or even scalogram that's what exactly i do i take a fourier transform or a short time fourier transform or a wavelet transform and take the squared magnitude then why should i break my head on performing this smooth wigner willi and the other question that is more important and interesting to ask is is there a, if there is a connection between these two approaches that is the smooth wigner willi and the squared magnitude of linear transforms we'll answer the second question first and talk about the first question second okay the main result that we have is which is uh, now established in the literature is that any positive quadratic energy distribution for a signal can be always associated with a linear transform of that signal where we denote the linear transform by this operator t essentially that linear transform amounts to taken in taking an inner product between the signal x and a time frequency atom because we are talking in the context of time frequency plane but always linear transforms can be associated with inner products now this is very nice because it says that instead of constructing smooth wigner willi i might as well start with linear transforms and then take a squared magnitude but we'll soon discuss why uh, going through the theory of smooth wigner willi is very useful to establish the proof we'll only establish the one way proof for this we will use moyal's formula so let's assume that at any point in the time frequency plane again tau comma z there exists a unique time frequency atom centered exactly at that point and that i i'm going to take a transform of the signal with this time frequency atom and then construct the energy density as a squared magnitude of the inner product coming out between the signal and the time frequency atom itself the gamma that you see here is an additional parameter like a scaling parameter that you would be using for the time frequency plane uh, time frequency atom now i invoke moyal's formula to establish the connection between smooth wigner willis and the uh, the energy densities that i construct from linear transforms what does moyal's formula tell me it says essentially that wigner willis preserve the squared inner products on the left i have the inner product squared inner product between x and y and on the right i have the double integral of product of wigner willis of x and y now if i set y to the time frequency atom i get the desired result how does it come about well when y is the time frequency atom this integral is nothing but the inner product between signal x and the time frequency atom itself and the magnitude square is nothing but the energy density well there is a factor of 2 pi that doesn't spoil the proof in any way on the right hand side as i am substituting y with the time frequency atom what do i have i have double integral of the wigner willi times the wigner willi of the time frequency atom compare this with the expression that we had in equation 2 here so what's happening here is that the smoothing kernel that's a term that is used for theta the smoothing kernel when it comes to constructing an energy density from linear transform is nothing but the wigner willi of the time frequency atom itself in other words if i start with a wigner willi for a signal and then i i decide to also perform a linear transform 
with a certain time frequency atom. What I can do is I can do two things and I will get the same answer. What are the two things? I take the Wigner Willi of the time frequency atom with which I am going to transform the signal and smooth the Wigner Willi of the signal that is one result. And the other result is simply linearly transform or transform the signal with this time frequency atom and construct the squared magnitude I will get the same result. right? So, which means I can show that probably spectrogram and scalogram which are constructed from linear transforms are nothing but special cases of smooth Wigner Willis. All I have to do is identify the associated kernel. Let us look at the spectrogram as an example. I know the time frequency atom associated with this construction of spectrogram is this w of t minus tau e to the j z tau. Right? Here there is no gamma per se. I could bring in a gamma if I wish. This w is a window function it is essentially the clipped sinusoid that I have. Now, the Wigner Willi of this time frequency atom is nothing but the Wigner Willi of the window itself shifted in time and frequency. Why? Because the Wigner Willi satisfies or respects this translation and frequency shifts. Right? All I have to do now therefore, to construct the spectrogram is I perform the Wigner Willi of the signal. I compute the Wigner Willi of the signal and smooth it with the Wigner Willi of the time frequency atom itself. So, now I have learnt another way of computing the spectrogram. Well, that is not the purpose here. The purpose here is to show the formal connections between spectrogram and smooth Wigner Willi. And the, the fact that I can take from here by looking at the Wigner Willi of the window is that this kernel is a convolving convolution kernel because I have a tau prime minus tau and z prime minus z and when I convolve the Wigner Willi of the signal with this kernel, it is going to be a, uh, I mean, a or when I smooth the Wigner Willi with this kernel, it is going to be a convolution in both time and frequency. Now, although I have learned how to achieve positivity of the Wigner uh, of the smooth Wigner Willi, I should keep in mind that the moment I work with positive time frequency distributions, two things are going to happen. One that the interferences are going to go to 0 that has to happen that is by virtue of the Wigner's theorem itself and that this positive time frequency distribution will not satisfy the marginality property. This is again by virtue of Wigner's uh, theorem itself and the proof of both these points. So, although I have uh, learned how to arrive at positive quadratic time frequency distributions by way of smoothing the Wigner Willi, I should keep in mind two points. One that this positive quadratic time frequency distributions will not satisfy the marginality property. We have studied this earlier in the form of Wigner's theorem. Two, which is a nice thing that there would not be any interferences in this uh, time frequency distribution or the positive time frequency distribution. Although the slide says positive time frequency, it should read strictly positive quadratic time frequency distribution. Of course, the only exception being the chirp which violates this, but strictly speaking for modulated chirps, the distribution is not really quadratic. So, in fact, you are in essence you are not violating this result itself. Both these points are proved nicely in Wigner's theorem and for a proof I refer you to Mallet's book. The proof is fairly straightforward to understand. We conclude with the answer to the first question that we raised where we said if I can construct a positive quadratic time frequency distribution starting from a linear transform such as short time Fourier transform or wavelet transform, then why should I work on smooth Wigner Willis? Well, there are a number of advantages. One, by specifying the kernel function, I can actually arrive at a number of desirable properties that I want for the distribution because a particular distribution may suit only some class of applications. For some other application, some other properties may be desirable. In which case, I may not know how to modify the spectrogram or scalogram. They may not be suitable for all applications. We know their limitations. So, in view of that, it is nice to know that there exists this freedom to uh, exercise where we can arrive at the desired frequency distribution. Of course, there are going to be constraints, but there is considerable freedom. And on the other hand, I can also find out if there is a requirement on the distribution what kind of kernels will produce. There may not be just one kernel, there may be a number of kernels that give me this. So, these are the prime reasons why 
the smooth Wigner-Willi distribution calls for some formal attention and uh, a careful study. The next two lectures is going to be building on what we have learned here. In the next lecture, we are going to look at Cohen's class of representations or distributions. And in the final lecture, we are going to look at what are known as affine invariant uh, distributions, which are again extensions of what we learn in Cohen's class. So, hopefully, you enjoyed the lecture. And if you want more details or formal details, please refer to these uh, books and papers that I have listed here. We will meet again in the next lecture. Thank you.